we just really felt that the Lord was opening doors and leading us here. With our whole hearts just sought the Lord and doors open. Next thing you know, we're moving our family mid school year, having to pull them out. It, it was a lot of change in a short amount of time with a whole bunch of different personalities. It felt like even though we know that the Lord opened the doors, it felt like we were just kind of hitting wall after wall. And it, it made us question, did we do the right thing? Getting our kids to kind of line up with that whole reality and mentality, like this is God, like this is totally God. It's hard right now, but God is in it. He's with us. That was, you know, a little bit of a struggle, getting them on board and trying to lead the way, pave the way as parents and our son Shiloh, who has struggled um, with depression. That opened a door for insecurities and just lack of self-confidence. It's stressful, you know, you're 15 years old, 16 years old, a teenager, and just, oh my gosh, am I gonna be accepted? Am I gonna have friends? Uh, is there bullying? Like, am I gonna get bullied here? Chad was very proactive, very, um, took initiative in making sure, like checking in with him, how are you, like where are you at? Because we know that he had, he struggled with depression. And we know that because part of my story, I've struggled with depression. There are times like just me and him were riding together and I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, how, you, how are you doing today? Like scale a, one to 10 or whatever. And he'd always say, I'm, I'm a four, like 10 being the worst, I'm a four. And I'm like, well, just, and I was just being real with him. Like we can get, we'll get through this type thing. It's just, it's a hard transition for all of us, but we're family, so we're gonna stick together and we'll get through this. You know, the thing of it is, he would typically always say he was okay. Yeah. And I get that because I would do the same thing. When, you, when you're not okay, there's just something about, I guess, being transparent and being vulnerable and saying, actually, I'm not okay, like I'm really struggling. We were just like, you know what, there's, we've been through a lot of stuff and there's like no shame. Like, we're there for you as parents and stuff and we'll, we'll keep this amongst ourselves, but we're here to walk through, through with you. And we just, we cried it out and hugged and stuff and she shared like some of her struggles, I shared with some of my struggles. And at the time we thought it was kind of over, and somewhat over and done with. On January 12th, yep. on a Wednesday, um, we were here at home. He got up and it just played out like any other ordinary day. It was time to go to soccer practice. And he went in the bathroom and he said, okay, I just need to get ready. And so I'm thinking, you know, he's getting ready for soccer practice. and. He wasn't getting ready for soccer practice. He brought his soccer bag in, and inside his bag, he he brought his 22 pistol in the bag. Stepped outside for a minute, and when I came back in, my daughter comes down the hall crying, and she couldn't catch her breath, and she couldn't express anything that was going on. She's just crying. So I'm like, what's wrong? And she's just, she can't express anything and communi communicate anything. And she finally musters out, I think Shiloh hurt himself. I went to the bathroom door and I knocked and I called out his name and there was no answer. And so I busted the door open and um, that's where I found Shiloh in the bathtub. And um, there was a note on the ground and I saw his gun and you know all that I could do all that I could think of was to speak life over him even in that instant there was a peace that came over me and I know it was just God's strength and I know it was just it really was just a God thing just the Holy Spirit intervening and bringing some sense of calmness to me so that I could communicate what's going on and where we're at between being on the phone with 911 and Chad letting him know and just praying over my son, putting pressure on his wound. Um, and just believing that 
death would not take him. There, he was forced to be taken off the ventilator, but um, Summers was just like the whole time, like it wasn't like I'm praying for a miracle, like it was a miracle. It, my son's gonna come out of this, like this is gonna happen, like as sure as the sky is blue or there's clouds in the sky, like Shiloh is gonna come out of this. And so that was my heart as a mom fighting and warring for my son and not accepting the report that the doctors were giving. I know the miracles, not just in the Bible, but you know, hearing them all throughout my life, different testimonies. And so why not believe that for us? Why not believe that for my son? Even though it didn't happen, I still believe and I still know God is a God of miracles and He is faithful and I don't understand and you know I'm not gonna pretend that I'm healed. This this is a part of our healing. There are days that are harder than others and you know if I'm to be transparent there are times that I don't feel like I'm gonna make it. You know, if we can put purpose to our pain, then let it be. And if we can share hope and if we can sit here and say, you know, we lost our son and our lives will never be the same. They are forever changed, but even in tragedy, we feel God's peace. Family Life Radio, it's Kankle Fritz and Friends. We gotta know. Having uplifting, you know, praise and worship on radio and, and listening to that and, and even, you know, some of the discussions and the morning talks or just hearing little nuggets and reminders of what you might already know or maybe even new revelation. There are two or three songs that came on Family Life Radio that I remember Shiloh specifically singing when he was a little kid. It just helped me, like, it broke me down emotionally, but at the same time, it just, it remembered the goodness of God. Even in this, we feel His love, and we've seen a body of believers in the community and what that looks like. And, you know, having people that don't even know us wanting to come and just be a support, just hearing little nuggets and reminders of what you might already know, or maybe even new revelation. Just sometimes at the right moment, you know, the Lord really knows what we need to hear and Definitely. having the right song come on and it's like, okay, I can do this, you know, I got this. Yeah. Or just that ministering and that encouraging and we want to be that to, to others.